Well, everybody, I'm back, and you better put your seatbelt on. We got a baller in the house. We got a superstar in the house, you know. And the Bible talks about give honor to whom honor is due. So I want to read her bio because uh, she deserves it. My very special guest today is Dr. Nicole Roberts Jones, and she's going to talk to us about bankroll your brilliance. Uh, she is affectionately called the purpose producer, and she is going to help us today to draw out what is best in us and helping us to, number one, determine what our brilliance is, and then helping us to collect our bag and then go to the bank. We all want that. Uh, she worked in Hollywood, and she was a talent management and casting uh, individual before she shipped her talent. I say before she surrendered and heard the voice of the spirit uh, to teach others how to bankroll their their brilliance. Uh, she's going to share that wonderful story. Some of her clients have included a Steve Harvey World Group, uh, Dale, she's worked with the wonderful Lisa Nichols. You guys know I've motivated. I, I've I've coached and worked with her, motivating the masses. And she is a best-selling author and a transformational speaker. And we are blessed to have her today. So, Dr. Nicole Roberts Jones, welcome to the Law of Retraction Radio Network. Excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let's just get with it. I have about 500 questions for you. <laughs> and um, I want to hear, I want you to share your story, your Hollywood story about mm -hmm. how is it that you really are walking in this very powerful place of, of your own awesomeness? Mm -hmm. So ever since I was seven years old, I'm, I'm from South Central LA. So if mm -hmm. you see Boys in the Hood, I grew up probably about 10 blocks from where they filmed that. that gotcha. movie. And if that neighborhood had its choice, my life should be defined by jail, drugs, or drive-by shootings. Mm -hmm. And so my, my, what I could see in my neighborhood was limited, mm -hmm. limited by what was surrounding me. But every day I watched TV and it made me dream. And mm -hmm. so ever since I was seven years old, I dreamed of working in the, in the, in the entertainment industry, if I get the word out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I went to college, got my degree. And literally when I graduated, there I was at the time, uh, this is back in 1993, I worked for Viacom's largest cable network. We had an outreach over 89 million homes on a weekly basis. Wow. And then from there, I was elevated into a casting position on the number one TV show on Fox. And mm -hmm. then from there, I worked with the entertainment group. And what we produced generated over $12.6 billion a year. So wow. I'm playing really, really big. And I'm going to tell you, I loved every minute of it. I was living my dream. But how I got to this place is in the dark of the night when I was by myself, huh? I felt like something was missing. And I kept thinking, are you crazy? You love your job. How do you feel like something is missing? I couldn't understand what I was feeling. And every time I talked to one of my friends about it, they would say, are you crazy? I'm like, <laughs> I feel crazy. And so I just felt dazed and confused, not knowing what else there could possibly be when this was the career, again, that I've dreamed of since I was seven years old and I was matriculating really well in it. And so to answer your question, one night, one of my good girlfriends, now this is 1993, y'all, if you are doing the math, this is a year after the LA riots, okay? Mm. So she says, hey, let's go work with youth at our, pro at our church one Friday night. I say, okay, I'm game. So we go to church and we start working with young people. And as I started working with young people, their eyes lit up. And as their eyes lit mm -hmm. up, my heart lit up. And I said, oh, my God, this is it. But I didn't know what coaching was. I had never heard of that word. I don't even know if coaching was even real in 1993. And so really in that moment, I had a choice to make. Do I go after or stay in the Nicole that everyone else expects that I expected of me? Uh -huh. Or do I go after this rumble that was in my soul that now is being answered by these young women looking at me? And so that's really how I began to say yes to what I know now is my calling. What God began to do, and I'm saying this because some of you are in that, in the middle of this right now. What I mm -hmm. realize now is your purpose matriculates. You know, God never intends for you to live on one level your entire life. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realize then is that the casting producing I was doing for TV and film, I now do that around purpose because I really put you in the right role that's in alignment with your assignment and help you make all the money you're meant to make from it. By the way, y'all, profit means gain. 
So when you're doing mm-hmm. the thing God created you to do, you're mm-hmm. gaining for the kingdom. And so I learned that over time. And that's really a uh, long story short, how I made my shift. <laughs> you know, I just love that. And I love your book, Find Your Fears, Answering Your Soul's Call to a Purpose, Power and Profit. And I thought about you when I heard that Beyonce, Sasha Fierce just finished re, um, performing in Dubai. And yes. since she knows who she is, reportedly was paid $24 million. Hello. And, and Hello. so so for listeners or people who are watching this, can we really profit from our purpose? Mm-hmm. So first, let me explain to you what I mean by find your fears. OK, yeah. I was watching Miss Beyonce uh, probably was about 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I would say I was jealous, but I was having I would say I was little, but I was full on having a whole <laughs> hateration moment. Because let me tell you, if I could sing because I could dance, but I cannot mm-hmm. sing. So if I could sing, Beyonce would have a run for her money, right? So I'm watching her, and what drops in my spirit while I'm watching her is you have fears too. And I'm like, okay, mm. this is not God talking to me while I'm watching Beyonce and, and hating on her. <laughs> and so what I began to realize is this. When Beyonce created that character, Sasha Fierce, it was a time when God was matriculating her gift to a new level. Mm-hmm. See, before then, she had been in a group with other women. And listen, y'all, think about all the stuff she went through with Destiny's Child. Two people yeah. left, then two people came, then one left, and she didn't give up. And now here she is faced with another challenge is to be solo. So for a good, since she was nine, she didn't go solo till she's like, for what, night? No, like in her early 20s. So think about how long that had been she'd been in a group. Mm-hmm. And so in order for her to do this thing that she knew she was meant to do, but she was scared to do it, she had to conjure up this alter ego to stand in the full power of who she be. And so what I know for sure is, one, God gave each of us DNA when we were born. When I say DNA, I'm talking distinct natural ability. There are things that you have a natural propensity to do or be. Those things are the very way God created you to be the answer to a group of people that need you, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work a nine to five. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, when I was watching Beyonce, I just fell on fire and I'm like, okay, Lord, I get it. And fellows that are listening, you have fears too. Just say ferocious, don't miss your blessing because you can't get that word. (laughs) My husband was like, I could be a whole lot of stuff, but I ain't gonna never be fierce. So fellas, ferocious, okay? So it's really being unapologetic about who you are Mm. and doing the thing that scares you to expand your territory, to be the answer you were born to be in this world. So I know you talk a lot about we're the answer, we're the solution. So how does, uh, how can we stand in all of our fierceness in spite Mm -hmm. of fear? What would that look like for listeners? So it's really getting clear on how you were created and crafted. So I call Mm. this the be, do, have formula. So Mm. many of you guys are going to ask me, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? But what you leave out is the be. And they call us human beings, but we're not. We're human doings. Because we focus on what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And God is not going to show up in your busy. Mm. So for me, when God was speaking to me, or when I, I didn't know then God was speaking to me, when I was confused about why I was feeling this way, it wasn't until I started working with those young women and I stopped and paused and started saying, what is going on with me that I got answers? So really, let me say it like this. So I created what I used to call my fierce uh, formula. Now I call it my, br- excuse me, my fierce framework. Now I call it brilliance framework because I didn't want men to miss, miss out. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, y'all. Your purpose, when you're standing in the full power of it, Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine among men and women that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So God wants you to shine. So there's four steps. And this is going to answer your question. Okay. Okay. So how do you know what your purpose is? The first two speak to that. The first is what are you passionate about? Like what do you Mm -hmm. love to do that you can do all day, every day and never get paid for? The second is what are you proficient in? What are you really, really great at? Now, those two have to correlate. You can't be, you can't love it and not be good at it. Cause I told mm-hmm. y'all I love to sing, but I'm not good at it. So I ain't nobody <laughs> trying to pay me for that, right? Or you can't be good at it and hate it. Like Michelle Obama, who got to a place in her legal career. She talked about this in her book, Becoming, and she hated it. So what happens is when you are not in alignment with you and listen, it could have been the very thing you started your career doing, but there comes a time when your gift has outgrown that seat and it's time to move into your next. Mm-hmm. So those are the two passion proficiency that have to correlate. The third is what problem does it solve? Every That's business, good. Nike, American Express, or my business or yours, Constance, all of us start our business as an answer to a problem, a need, a desire. So what are you the answer to? You've got to understand you're not everybody's answer. 
I see so many people that start businesses and say, I can serve every woman. Yeah, that's why you're not making no money. Uh-huh. You've got to really be clear on how you're wired and how that wiring is an answer. And then last is how do you profit from it? Those of you that are working on a five, it's the position of it because the position makes the business profit. So it's really looking at, again, profit means gain. But ultimately, when I make more money in my business, I can serve more people. So okay. it means I can hire more team. I can do more good in the world. So it's really looking at how do I create multiple streams of income from what I already know? So I want to go back to being and unpack that a little bit because I'm so big on that. You know, we're such a performance base from yes. the outside and 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 expound more on being because for me that's might be sitting in stillness, hearing mm-hmm. from God, getting some downloads. What would that look like? So, you know, when we get to a place where something seems off or something is shifting. Mm-hmm. Usually for me, it was, I was feeling like something was missing. It was that time. That's not the only time I felt like that, y'all. God don't do it once. He keeps doing it when he wants you to grow, right? So what happens is in that moment, many of us, uh, me included, we have a natural propensity to just work more. Oh, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to work harder. Or maybe I need to do this. Instead of saying, you know, let me sit with what's coming up for me. So everybody finds this resolution differently. For me, I have 20 minutes at minimum of Jesus time a day. My mm-hmm. husband laughs at me because sometimes I'll be playing play, praise and worship music all loud, hearing me all singing and crying and talking. <laughs> sometimes I'm reading a devotional. Sometimes I'm doing both. So it's finding what that quiet space looks like for you. And I find that when I do that, God doesn't always talk then. He'll talk later. He'll mm-hmm. drop some of them. But I have to spend time. Think about what a relationship looks like. If my husband never dated me, how would I know? who he is, the decisions I need to make. Sometimes when he's not at home, I know what he would say yes and the same for him that I would say yes and no to because we know each other. And so it's that intimacy with God and with you because there's God inside of you. So it's, it's sitting in that quiet time and everybody does it different. I do it sometimes walking, journaling. Uh-huh. I think um, I saw John Legend on an interview once and he said that sometimes he's writing a song and he's like, ooh, I didn't even know that was in me. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes just when you start writing, things start coming out. And so it's finding whatever that is for you, but having that time with you and God and nobody else. Well, oh, that's so good, uh, Dr. Nicole. Well, you know, you mentioned multiple streams of income and I thought of my own life uh, where I had major contracts for years and didn't even have to bid for them. And then one day they said, the budget has changed. Yeah, it scared the heck out of me. And that was back in the day when I learned my really hard lesson. So talk about the power of multiple streams of income for people that are in business. Sure. So, you know, as my grandmother used to say back in the day, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. So let me let me first tell you my story, because I'm not somebody that just talks to talk. y'all. I lived it. I failed at it. I breathed it. I figured it out. And then God said, teach it. I'm like, OK, so literally, I told you the first part of my story. In 1993, I left entertainment to do this thing that I didn't even know what to call it. I started mm-hmm. as a volunteer. Over time, my business grew. So by 2010, now 17 years in. OK, this year will mark 30 years. I'm like, ah, how old are you? Right. <laughs> so anyway, um, 2010. My business looks successful. So remember I told you I was working with teenage girls in my church. Uh That one volunteer moment became a a nonprofit with 10 chapters in 10 churches throughout the country. That was my nonprofit. Then I had a for-profit arm and I was coaching highly skilled women like many of you. And yes, I do serve a few good men. Um, But at the time, I only had women in my practice. So my my coaching client roster was at 100%. So I thought, oh, my first book came in 2010, came out in 2010. And I was thinking I could give my principles to women I can't take on as a client and at the same time raise money for my nonprofit. When that book came out, and I am going to answer your question, but I want y'all to see this. Mm -hmm. When that book came out, I started getting invitations to speak all over the country. So let me tell you, this was the vision that I saw for my business in 1993. Me speaking Mm -hmm. all over the country, me coaching, me me speaking, writing books. But let me tell y'all something. I was only generating $13,000 a year in my business. Mm, thank you for your honesty and vulnerability. 13000 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. I did not start my business for it to be community service because that's what $13,000 <laughs> feels like. Because that's, that's lower than poverty level, right? 
And so my epiphany came one Sunday. Actually, it was November 7th, 2010. And yes, that's my birthday, November 7th. Okay. Yeah, so special day, special day, <laughs> mm-hmm. all the way around. <laughs> yes, I'm a Scorpio too, girl. My birthday. Oh, uh, okay. Home. Anyway, we won't get on that tangent. But listen, <laughs> so I was sitting on my couch. It was a Sunday night. I just got home from a speaking weekend. And by the way, you guys know I had a daytime job because I can't eat on $13,000. So at the time, I was working as an adjunct professor and at Boston University. And my class was at 8 a.m. That was a Sunday night, 8 a.m. Monday morning. I hadn't looked at the syllabus. I don't think I read the books. I told my students to read. I hadn't written a lecture note. <laughs> and I was sitting on my couch tired, exhausted, thinking I can't do this anymore. I, I can't do it. And I said, God, I... I, if this is really you, I need you to show me something because this is not working. This little thirteen thousand dollars and me having to uh, work this daytime job and travel and all of this. And although I loved what I was doing, I was clear was my purpose, but something had to shift. And so, to make an even longer story short, all past led to me meeting my coach. She cost thirty thousand. Told you I only made thirteen thousand. Uh-huh. So listen, knees knocking, teeth chattering. I had to risk it all to gain it all. Hired her. And let me tell you what she began to show me. I call it your blind spots. Uh And so I didn't know what I didn't know. Here I was. And by the way, I was teaching at a master's degree level students. Okay. So here I'm teaching at graduate school at Boston University. I taught at USC for five years almost before I moved to Boston. So I'm thinking I should know how to do this, right? My ego was in the way. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. My ego was Mm -hmm. in the way. Been there. I knew it all. I knew it all. Oh, I knew how to do this. Yes. Well, I was only making 13,000. One, two. You know, I often say, and unfortunately, all I have is this water bottle. So I always say, you can't see the label from inside the jar. So if I am on the inside of this jar, that's how much water I got to drink. Two of these in a day, right? Anyway, if I can't I see the label, I if got I'm inside you. the jar, right? Um, if I'm inside this jar, y'all, I can't see this label. That means I can't mm-hmm. see what I do and how I do the thing that I do effortlessly. There are things that are intrinsic to your DNA that you don't even realize that you do. So there were so many pieces of me that I was overlooking. So to make an even longer story short, my coach said to me, Nicole, wait a minute. You told me you're an adjunct professor and what you teach is program development. You told me you've worked with heads of state, you work with celebrities, you work with all these different businesses developing programs. I said, yeah. She said, Nicole, you don't have any programs in your own business. Hello. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that night, I had a speaking gig the next day, by the way, y'all. So that night I developed my first program. Do you know I made $10,000 in one day? And by the way, that mm-hmm. program I wasn't present for. So I think what, to answer your question, there are three things that I learned in that moment. Number one, you need a coach that can see in your blind spots because there are pieces of what you do that you do on autopilot that you don't realize that you do. So that's number one. The second thing you need is what I call a blueprint. Now, what do I mean by that? So think about what a blueprint does to a house. And please, girl, interrupt me because I can talk, right? The second thing you need is a blueprint. So think about what a blueprint is for a house. So I recently had the uh, was blessed to redo the house I grew up in. And let me tell you what I did because I didn't know that I needed a blueprint. <laughs> I, put, I put all these pictures off of Pinterest. And I'm like, I want these cabinets and I want these floors and I want this marble countertop. And, and my contractor was looking at me like, mm, he let me finish. He said, none of that matters if you don't have a blueprint. Mm. because now the house is in LA if an earthquake comes and the flooring doesn't match the the walls or the roof it's gonna fall and so what many people do when they start a business is they don't start and critically create a methodology so they mm. do whatever whenever however so if I give you an example and there's a number three I'll tell you in a minute if I okay. give you an example of uh, what it looks like to have a methodology. I was blessed to coach Dr. Deborah Tillman, America's super nanny. Uh-huh. Um, and when I met Deborah, I met her at a conference. She had the opposite issue. She she didn't need to make any more money. For her, she was leaving transformation behind. I was leaving money on the table. She was leaving transformation behind because she couldn't take any more clients because of how busy she was coaching families, traveling all over the country. At the time, she owed child care centers as well. And so she wanted to be able to serve more people and not be present. And someone said she had to talk to me and there we were. So hired me, we started working that on her first coaching call, I started to say to her, number one, there's things in your blind spots you can't see and you need to create a methodology. And she said, no, I tailor the experience every time I work with a parent. And I let her finish. I said, are you done? Because you don't. Mm-hmm. And she was silent. I was like, oh, she about to fire me. <laughs> so let me tell you guys, I gave her the same assignment I give to every one of my clients. The same thing I did that night after my coach showed me me. And she came to the second, our second call in tears. 
because she didn't realize that there are things that she does on autopilot yeah. that are a part of her methodology. So we created her blueprint, which she calls the GPS, the greater parenting system. She now has GPS online. She has GPS groups, mm -hmm. meaning she can serve more people and not be present, which speaks to number three. You've got to be making money in your sleep. Tell the truth. Because mm -hmm. you can't clone you. I was just talking to a, a, a radio um, DJ yesterday and he was saying, oh, I'm tapped out. And, and I said, yeah, because you can't clone yourself. And he was silent. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I said, you know, what most people don't realize, and listen, so many people hear me say this on a radio show and they go put together an online program and then they see me out and out and about and they go, it didn't work. You know why it doesn't work? If you just go put together any old thing, because you're not clear on the result, the problem you're the answer to, if you don't create a methodology from it, it doesn't matter that you have an online program, it's not going to work. So it's not as simple as, oh, let me throw something up real quick. You've got to really, really go back to the core of who you are and how God crafted you to be, create a blueprint from it. And then one of those streams of income needs to be money while you're not present. Nothing but the truth. And you know, after the pandemic, I mean, things shifted so drastically. Mm -hmm. And uh, who was I interviewing? Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. And, you know, there are just, there are just millions waiting for people, but they haven't set in stillness enough to know, man, I have this gift and I am a solution in this area. Is that what you're saying people should do? I think what happens is when you try to answer it yourself, there'll be pieces you don't see. I mm -hmm. think you need to get still so God can show you, okay, let me just say it this way. Um, all of us, many of us heard about the prayer Jabez. We mm -hmm. were sick of it years ago because they talked about it so much. Well, y'all might not have been sick of it. I was, okay? So First Corinthians <laughs> 4, 9 and 10. What's interesting is he's only mentioned in two verses in the entire Bible. Okay? Yeah, so but true. His prayer was so significant. And he said, God, please enlarge my territory. He's saying, God, I want to do more for you. I think what most people don't realize is you've got to ask God and sit in stillness and say, I'm ready to, to serve. Show me what you want me to do. Once he shows you, that's where you need methodology. So you need both revelation and methodology. Where mm -hmm. I was, where I failed y'all, as I had revelation, I had no methodology until I hired that coach. And I'm gonna tell you, it took 17 years. I feel like it took so long so I'd be passionate about it. <laughs> like the um, story of the children of Israel that went around that mountain for 40 years, mm -hmm. it been 40 days. Yeah, it took me 17 years. It probably should have been 17 days, but I was hard headed and I didn't have methodology. And I really think you thinking that, okay, I know what my purpose is, but do you know who your ideal client is? Yeah. Do you know what problem you solve? Mm -hmm. Do you know all the things that you need to know around that so that you can be the exact thing God created you to do or be in this world? You know, I'm reading this book. I'm going to be quiet after this. I'm, a, I'm hoping you're, I'm you're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Because I can talk, y'all. I get excited. I get excited when you start talking about uh, making money because I want you guys to get profit means gain. God created you to gain for the kingdom. So here's what is so deep and interesting. And because I'm reading this book right now, I'm a mess of Bible verses. So y'all roll with me. Mm -hmm. When God kicked the devil mm -hmm, out of heaven, he kicked him down here to earth. Now I want you to get it. When he kicked the devil out of heaven is because the devil was like, well, I want to take over your spot, God. I want to sit in your seat. Can I have full authority? And God said, no, mm -mm, no. Now, from what I'm reading, the enemy, God had given the devil authority over, over, over earth. Oh, but that wasn't enough for him. So when God kicked him out, God also shut down the earth. So when we look at Genesis 1, God is recreating the earth, but he didn't give the dominion back to the devil. He gave it to us. So the enemy fights us to be clear on our purpose, because when we start to do the thing we were crafted and created to do, we're standing in our authority and we're taking it away from his ability to, to grab it and take it. Nothing but the truth. And, you know, and to stand in that uh, and to say, and no, this is who I am. These are what my gifts are. This is how I'm going to serve. What role do you feel like self-image, self-esteem? Because, you know, a lot of people say, I just want to help people, but they ain't making no money. So what role do you feel like that knowing your value in exchange for dollars? So um, anytime you do something you've never done before, it's going to be scary. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I always like to say is your comfort. And your conviction can never coexist. Mm, good. So when you're trying to be comfortable, and this happens to many of us, okay? A lot of my clients, a little something called imposter syndrome, okay? So if you've never sold your gift this way, it doesn't mean you're not gifted. 
It doesn't mean the gift isn't there. It means you've just never done it like this. And so it's going to be scary and it's going to make you second guess yourself. And so you've got to be willing to do it afraid. If you think of mm-hmm. anybody great in the Bible or anybody you, you admire, like if I say Tyler Perry, uh, he, his play bombed a good five times before it, it actually took off the first one. He was living in a car, y'all. Okay. I don't know mm-hmm. how many of y'all would have quit after the first one did horrible and already living in a car. I can go on and on about things people went through and things people did. So I think you've got to know that when we talk about worth, you got to know your value in God. Yeah. So when you start to get to know your gift, now understand this is nobody's gift but yours. Just like when you're pregnant, ain't nobody going to push that baby out but you. So it's nobody's responsibility. It's nobody's business but you and God. So you've got to stop looking for other people to give you permission to be who God created you to be. So that's the other reason why I like a Beyonce, Miss Sasha Fierce. She, she is, she, look, she stands out and does her own thing. And she doesn't care what other people think. Well, I don't know. I haven't met her yet, but it appears that she doesn't care <laughs> what other people think of what other people say. Look at Oprah. I mean, when you look at the people that are standing out from the crowd, Absolutely. they're not trying to do what everybody else does, but they're getting clear on themselves. And so for me, the reason my business failed for years is because I wasn't clear on the results. When I started getting clear on the outcome you get when you work with me, oh, I'm unapologetic. Yeah. And I remember a woman called me once and said, oh, God sent me to you. And I said, okay. I still, when, I, when I'm talking to you, I'm still going to ask you, you know, what you, what you need. Cause I'm a mm-hmm. server, not a seller. So I'm still going to ask you questions. And then when we finished, we both concluded that the program I have, my Brains Master Academy was a good fit for her. So then I told her how much it was. And she was like, Ooh, I said, Oh God, didn't tell you I was expensive. I just <laughs> laughing. Now I'm clear. I'm not as expensive as most but I'm more expensive than some. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I said to her, well, she said, I'm going to be proud. I said, God already gave you your answer. He's not going to answer you again. Yeah. I said, so when you're ready to be obedient, I'll be here. And I'm yeah. sharing that with you now because God is looking for what you will do with what you have. Will you wait to be comfortable? I'm not going to happen in comfort. My coach, that 30,000, baby, I wasn't comfortable. I didn't know when I paid that deposit, I was praying, Lord Jesus, I don't know how I'm going to make the rest of these payments, but I'm a trust. And literally I went from 13,000 to 200,000 within six months because I was willing to do it afraid. So to answer your question, to go back, self-confidence comes in action and yeah. you taking the action and, and you stop waiting on God, you know, when in actuality, God has done his part. He's waiting on you. And it'll show up when you start to activate what's already in you. That self-confidence comes as you activate it. That's it, that's it that's why Beyonce created Sasha Fierce. She wasn't confident. She was scared to go on stage. And so she conjured up an alter ego so she could stand in this other thing, right? So if you need to get an alter ego so you can be all of you, then get it. But realize now you don't hear about Sasha Fierce anymore. Mm-mm. You sure don't. She's walking it out. Mm-hmm. It She's worked walking in for the it moment. Out. For her to transition into it, but now she no longer needs it. Well, you know, I want you to expound on the power of coaching because I'm I am a coach and mm-hmm. I'm just so big on that. And like you, I have two coaches, and and uh, my listeners know that you know I paid an exorbitant amount back in the day, yep. and I was like, oh my god, but that money was an investment yes. and shifted and changed my entire life so so talk a little bit more about coaching and Mm -hmm. uh, you know I know you said a coach can see your blind spots what else Mm -hmm. what would be some benefits so I think there's so many benefits to having a coach so think about you know when you when a top athlete is like if I use Venus and Serena or Serena Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so when Serena was trying to go up and push herself to her next level it wasn't her by herself it was her coach dad for a while and then she got a coach so uh, the difference between a mentor and a coach, because so many people ask me to be their mentor and I say, no, I don't know you. See, a mentor is someone that you've already worked with, that you already mm-hmm. have a relationship with, but they're, they're going to meet you just whenever. You may have one coffee every six months. You can't create strategy from that. Mm-mm. A coach is someone you have a contractual relationship with, meaning I'm going to meet you once a month or every other week. And we're working toward this predictable end. So a coach is going to help you push you like a trainer in the gym. Now I'm going to tell you, I got a trainer right now that just texted me before I got on here. And I was like, leave me alone. Don't ask me what I ate for lunch. I haven't eaten lunch yet. Right. So don't, don't ask me. Right. And so anyway, um, that's how I felt, but I answered her, Mm -hmm. but she's doing that because she knows the the, the, the middle of the day is when I cheat. Mm -hmm. So, so for me being in menopause, hello menopause and my body (laughs) shifting, the, the stuff I used to do doesn't work. So I'm sharing that because when you're starting a business, you could have been very successful in your career, 
or when you're looking to do something different in your career. You could be successful here. When you're going here, you need new tools. There's one of my favorite quotes is the tools you've used on this level are not sufficient for your next. And you don't know what tools to use. So that's why a coach is beneficial. A coach that's at least 10 steps ahead of you. Absolutely. That can light on a path and show you what you need to do so that you can get to where you want to go. So what about folk who are listening say, well, you know, Dr. Nicole, I want to make more money, but I just don't know what my purpose is. I mean, if I hear that one more time, I'm going to scream. What would you say to those people who say, I don't know what my purpose is? Are they saying, I don't know what my gift is? Or You know what's so interesting? So since you brought up my book and it just happens to be sitting, I'm going to show you guys okay. to my book. So this is me at three. Okay. I'm not even trying to get this, okay. <laughs> So what's so funny is my husband did a roast for my 40th birthday, y'all. And you see, I'm talking in this picture. And he said, how come you're talking in every picture? I'm like, do you know me? Hello, right? <laughs> I got trouble every day when I was little for talking too much. So that's number one. The second thing is, in this baby carriage, do you see a baby in that baby carriage? I think they're books. Uh-huh. Because I've always been a natural producer. Mm -hmm. I've always been her. And because it's always, it's not something you need to, to create. Your purpose is not something you need to create. Mm -hmm. It's something you need to discover because it's there already or uncover. Some of you have uncovered only pieces of it. And so this is why I always say you cannot see the label from inside the jar because there are pieces of it that you're operating in and you'll say stuff like, oh, can't everybody do this? Or, oh, this thing? Yeah. N nobody can do it like you. You need to understand that. So when you look at JLo and Beyonce, totally different. If I say Janet Jackson and Beyonce, totally different. I can keep mm -hmm. going. Totally different, but I love Janet for different reasons and I love Beyonce. I can go on and on, right? And it's they're not comparable. So you've got to be clear and sit with, and if you don't know what your purpose is, this is why you need a coach, an outside person that can pull it out of you. The other thing I love about coaching, because technically I'm, I'm trained as a, as a counselor, okay? And uh, don't y'all don't send me no inbox messages for what I'm about to say, okay? So in counseling school, they teach you that your clients are broken and that you, you can fix them. I don't believe in that. You're not broken. Mm -hmm. As a coach, what you learn is I'm shining a light so you can see pieces of you that you may not have been able to see without the light. That's so, good. Again, it's not that it's not there, it's there, but you just are overlooking it. That was me. So I think those of you that don't know your purpose is there, get with the coach. And I'm clear I'm not everybody's coach, but there's a coach you've been eyeing. Uh, you need to uh, get with him or her and get clear what your purpose is because no matter how smart you are, I don't care how many degrees you have, I don't care how many years you've been in your business, et cetera, et cetera, or in the industry you've been in, until you're clear on that, everything you do will fail. I'm so I'm so glad you said what you said about counseling and coaching. I'm a, co I'm a counselor for for 30 years and I always knew God don't want us looking and digging so much in the past and what happened to you know it is there mm -hmm. but strategically just like you said you said it so profoundly when you do begin to get clear about who you are those things will come up and you can easily shift and change them and I just ask about them I mean because I'm training this counselor so if I see it I'm gonna ask about it and mm -hmm. ask what happened there and make some suggestions, and then you get to choose. The thing that some counselors, not every counselor, will mm -hmm. keep you stuck there and yeah. lay, lay on the couch for weeks and weeks. And now every counselor's not like this, y'all. Don't, don't be sending me no inbox messages, but a lot are. And you never feel movement because they will just ask you questions and keep you there. I want to move you from there because there's so much more than yesterday for you. There's tomorrow. And yesterday, we do need to heal. Don't, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I've been to counseling too. Trust and believe I've been to counseling. Okay, because I had a whole lot of yesterday that I had to get resolved. But once it gets resolved, it's, it's not gonna go away. But you should have the tools to know when it comes up. That's that being time, by the way, y'all, when, when it comes up, I'm like, Oh, let me go sit in my being. Here it is. Right? Because <laughs> the devil also knows what it is. Mm -hmm. And if he's trying to take your authority, okay, that's what he brings up in your face. So you will quit. So you'll second guess yourself. So you'll never get to the abundantly above all that God wants for you. You know, I, I love that you say that, you know, when you bankroll, it's gain. And mm -hmm. so for people who've been struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, you know, that is great news. So yeah. share with us just, a, I know you got hundreds, but just <laughs> a story of one of your clients who who maybe you coached and now they are bankrolling their brilliance. 
sure. I'm gonna tell you a story, but let me tell you guys the other side of what happened after I worked with my coach and okay. started realizing I had blind spots, right? So, and you guys, I'm transparent. So before then, so when I read my whole, you know, I had 10 chapters in 10 states, I was speaking all over the country. That sounded sexy, right? Mm -hmm. But I was flying myself out to those speaking gigs and putting myself up, okay? Because I was thinking, this is my ministry. I'm meant to serve, right? And so mm -hmm. I gotta go serve the people. <laughs> and so, and then I started taking my husband's frequent flyer miles because he works in corporate. And I'm like, it's a gift to the ministry, baby. And he used to look at me like, whatever. Right? <laughs> I'm saying my business is my ministry. Okay. By the way, ministry in the dictionary. So says, funny. <laughs> the ministry in the dictionary says to serve a group of people. That's what I do in my business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So call myself a marketplace minister. We can go into all of that, but here's what I want you to get. So learn all these things and start making money in my business. And then I get my first call to a speaking gig. Guess what? It's a church. I'm like, really, Lord, why church got to call me first? And it's the first lady calling me or something like, oh. And so when she asked me my speaking fee, I said it and I hushed. Mm -hmm. and she said, okay. I was like, did she just say okay? Because we're mm -hmm. on the phone. And then she said, well, what hotel do you want to stay in? What? what? Do you have a preferred airline? I'm thinking, what? So mm -hmm. I hang the phone up. Now, if you know me, Constance, like I think you do, you know, I was like, look, really, Lord? Really? All this time, I've been in struggle. Yeah. Really, let me tell you what God said back to me. He said, struggle and service should never coexist. Why would I give you a gift and want you to struggle to do it? Truth. But I need y'all to get this. We choose struggle when we aren't willing to invest at the level we want to see the return. We invest in Louis Vuitton and Mercedes uh -huh. and Gucci and, and I can go on and on. We pay for college tuition. We, and yet, you don't want to invest in your purpose. You know, God is so good. DNA in you. When you were born, he invested distinct natural ability in you. What's God's return on his investment? So good. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, once you got in the vibration of this is who I am, mm -hmm. this is what I, I offer on the inside of you, other people felt that. Yeah. And they recognized yeah. because you, you had acknowledged all of that. You're, yeah. And, and they were like, oh, no problem. All right. Well, let me say this too. So let me okay. answer the second part of your question. I just realized I, listen, y'all, I'm a, I'm a woman of a certain age. I forget stuff. So if I forget the answer <laughs> to a question, girl, say something. So, so client example. So I'm not going to say her name. I'm sure mm -hmm. she wouldn't mind, but I'm going to call her R. <laughs> mm -hmm. So R was working with me. And, you know, again, when I work with you, I'm helping you be clear on the lane your gift is meant to dwell in because you're not everybody's answer. So what mm -hmm. is that one lane? Okay. And then once we get clear on that one lane, we create methodology. So she got a call from her local chamber, okay? Oh, I got another story that's good too. She got a call from her local chamber. She's like, oh my God, what do I do with that? I said, listen to what they need. And if it's not one of the steps of your methodology, you have no business doing it. If it mm -hmm. is, make the pitch and say that step, whatever number. And then they're gonna ask you what it is and just talk about that one step. And so literally she did that. Not only did she get the contract then, but now she's on, she has an ongoing contract with them now. She's on their board now. I mean, so it, that one moment with one workshop now turned into a multiple year contract. Another client who is an administrator, I'm not saying people's names because they don't know I'm going to say I got you. On, on, on the radio. So um, she's a, she was a uh, school administrator. She had been a teacher for years and moved into administration. She came into my uh, Brilliance Mastery Academy program because she really wanted to be able to serve teachers. And so we got clear on her ideal client, which wasn't teachers. Now, is she going to serve teachers? Yes. But her ideal client is this actual school. And so once we started getting clear on the shift she needed to make to look at the school and not just the teacher. Mm -hmm. That's good. The methodology to serve from that. And she fought me on it, though, because I'm going to tell you, y'all, when you're in a box and all of us, when you work in a system like a school system or mm -hmm. corporation, they put you in a box over time, not on purpose. You say yes to it because you get into that 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 rigor role of that that organization, that big conglomerate you're a part of. OK, so I had to shift how she looked at that. OK, so we did it together, though. So listen, she created a methodology, Microsoft called. And she was wow. like, oh my God, I said, girl, don't you, I said, don't give it all away. I know you went up to know you're going to start teaching them and they'll take it and steal it. Don't you do mm -hmm. that? I said, listen to what they need. And then I said, same thing I said to our, my other client. <clears throat> so literally, do you know that Microsoft bought her methodology? Wow. They're doing it in one state to try it out. It will be all over in schools all over the country. So, and that's one contract. She has like four now. So when you start getting clear 
on who you are and how God crafted you and you create methodology from it, it makes a world of difference. When people come to you, if they don't fit in that methodology, you have no business doing it anyway. Absolutely. So what does it feel like for you to bankroll your brilliance? I mean, you were successful when you were in Hollywood. I heard uh, Pam Perry call you Hollywood. So what does it feel like now? And because people are always wanting to know. So what does it feel like to have wealth and abundance and walk on your purpose? What would you say to that? So, you know, what's interesting is I don't look at money being my wealth. I look at the legacy, the gain that I'm making for the kingdom as my wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at, when I die and get to meet God face to face, I want him to say, job well done. I don't, I don't want him to say what happened. You, mm -hmm. Go back. You're not done. Right. So for me, it's really looking at the impact, the significance, which is much bigger than just success. Cause listen, I, I say it like this, God is God of systems. So when I do the thing that I'm called and created to do, and I serve my clients. So when I look at the, I'll call her M, so I won't say her name, mm -hmm. M, that got the so funny M in Microsoft. Her day, name does start with an M though. Um, <laughs> when I look at what she does. I'm a part of that. So then when she serves all the teachers that that curriculum is going to serve, I'm a part of that. Yeah. So all of that is a part of my legacy. If I can go down each client and as they serve their clients, they're a part of that legacy. And so really for me, it's looking at the masses, the, the way I'm able to multiply the, the gain for the kingdom. You know, when yeah. we all do the thing that God, I keep saying this over and over, but I want y'all to get this. If I am who I'm called and crafted to be, and I serve my client, I'm, I'm, that's a part of the kingdom. Yeah. As my clients do the thing that God called and crafted them to do, that's part of bringing the kingdom down here on earth. And so at the end of the day, it's really, I get excited when I see my clients flourish, when I see them getting yeah. clear, when I see their aha moments, when I see their clients doing well. Um, I have another client that teaches high school students. And I remember she was having an event. She was stressing out calling me on the way to the event. And I was in an event. So I got her message late. And then she said at the end, you know what? I have a methodology. Why am I calling you? Let me just go do my methodology. Right. So she hung up. I called her later the day. She said, you know what? I was scared because I had never done it, but I, I trusted what, you know, what we created, which was our methodology. She said, oh my God, I hit it out of the park. It was, oh, it was awesome. And so it's really moments like that yes. is what I look for. Well, tell listeners and people who are watching about your services. How can we get your book? What programs do you offer? I've been all over your website, I tell you. <laughs> so first You're I want to something give a free else. gift. Okay. And we give a free gift. So um, bankroll your brilliance book, free ebook that gives you 15 ways to get paid for what you know. Again, it's bankroll your brilliance book.com. So when you get that, y'all know you're gonna get an email from me, right? So you're gonna be in my email. <laughs> but and I'm transparent. So um, yes, I have coaching. Brilliance Mastery Academy is my signature program where myself and my team work with you um, for a year, like an incubator to create programs to get your entire business up and running. Some of it is recalibrating. Some of it is taking down and restarting. And some people are starting up. So brilliancemasteracademy.com is where you find that. Outside of that, I'm, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> uh, in Roberts Jones, when my name is too long, uh, cause sometimes it is or Nicole Roberts Jones and all those places. So, so in closing, what would be one mantra, one revelation, one insight, one nugget of wisdom that you would like to leave with people? You've already shared so much. That's why when you were talking, you said, girl, you better stop me. You know, I'm like, <laughs> nope. I know when the anointing is on someone and I know how to flow with that. So what <laughs> word of wisdom would you leave with listeners all over the world? Um, one of my favorite, and I, I shifted it, I heard someone say this, and I don't remember who, and I shifted it, um, is that your comfort zone is where your purpose goes to die. Wow. They said dreams, but I say purpose. And, and so many people wanted to be comfortable and God never said it was going to be easy. Mm -hmm. He never said it was going to be comfortable, but he did say it would be worth it. Wow. So you got to be willing to do it uncomfortable. Well, I tell you what, Dr. Nicole Roberts-Jones, you are an amazing woman. So grateful uh, that we connected. And guys, I want you to go to her website, take advantage. You see the wisdom, the spirituality, the knowledge, and even the, the sense of humor that she has 
and uh, go to her website, take advantage of uh, that free gift that she's going to give you, and also take advantage of her coaching. Yes. And uh, I just thank God for connecting us, Me too. and uh, you, you're just you. such a blessing to the world. Yay, so everybody... Uh, I, I want, as you watch this or listen to this, I want you to share this podcast, this show uh, with your friends, with your coworkers, with anybody who's in business, uh, share it on your timelines, on social media, so that we all can shift and change. And as my niece say, unconscious, go get the bag and, you know, and, and bankroll our brilliance. It's yeah. the will of God for your life to live an abundant and wealthy life in all areas. So make a decision to have a great week, everybody. Thank you.